We call it Planet Mars. The French have been marching in this unforgiving landscape for weeks. Each soldier carries more than 50 kilos. And under their boots, the rocks are as jagged and as sharp as glass. It's relentless. It is unremitting. There is no respite here. And by 60 degrees Celsius, the dark stones become as hot as burning coals. Nearly 2,000 French soldiers are deployed all over this rocky desert, with as many troops from Chad in support. All engaged in the fiercest fighting last month, inflicting heavy casualties on the insurgents, including one of the most violent Al-Qaeda field commanders, Abu Zaid. We tried to um, spot him and fire at quite reasonable distance. And then we came to phase two, which was uh, clearing of all the, the caves around the valley, which was now down to uh, uh, man to man fighting and clearing caves with a grenade. Caches are being found every day, and they're full of weapons, ammunition, and food supplies. Here, the units we were following found explosive belts ready for use mortars and a hundred kilos of nitrate for the manufacture of the improvised explosive devices. The soldiers immediately destroyed it all. So how do you secure such a vast region, such a hostile desert where Al-Qaeda and their allies have been operating for years, building hideouts and imposing their control? Well, the French are on the hunt, on the ground, valley after valley, hill after hill, with constant support coming from the air. This is as fast as it gets, a combat tactic unique to the French army. They fly extremely low to surprise the gunmen they have spotted and avoid ground-to-air missiles. The risk is huge. At 10 meters above the ground, these helicopters are vulnerable to lighter firearms. A French pilot was killed at the beginning of this campaign. For now, the French are convinced they've broken the neck of Al-Qaeda in the region, cutting off the militants' routes of supply and trafficking. France also worries about the plight of seven of its nationals who are believed to be held hostage somewhere here. The search for them continues. Thomas Fessy, BBC News, in Northern Mali.